In this video, I am going to talk about this book, Reading the New Testament as Christian Scripture by Constantine Campbell and Jonathan Pennington. This is going to be an interesting book, and it's a little different to what I normally do, so let's get into it. This month, normally what I do on the first week of a month is I will publish a video talking about a Greek New Testament. This month I thought I'd do something a little different, and I want your feedback on this. This is something that is helpful to you. This book is actually not, <laughs> as you can tell, a Greek grammar. It's actually kind of more like a New Testament survey, and I'll talk about that in just a moment. But normally I would do a Greek grammar, and next month I will be back with another Greek grammar review for you, so we're going to be back to normal. But let me know what you think of this and doing these kinds of additional books outside of plain old Greek stuff as well. The reason I wanted to do this is because reading through the New Testament is all well and good in Greek, but it's important that you know more than just the language. And so reading a book like this is actually a great way to start to learn some of the background, some of the other issues related to the book itself. And even if you're reading through a book in the New Testament, and it doesn't matter if you're reading it in English or in Greek, a book like this can be really helpful to walk you through the book itself, some of the background information, some of the theological issues, how the book is structured, and then how the section you're reading actually flows into that larger structure. And that's one of the reasons why I think reading books like this can be a really helpful exercise, particularly if you're reading a little bit more slowly as you go through the New Testament in the original languages. So that's why I think reading books like this occasionally helpful, and that's why I've kind of decided to step outside of the norm a little bit for this particular video. Now, the title of this book is... I thought a little deceptive. As I kind of looked at this book, I thought, hey, that looks like a really interesting book. How should we think of the New Testament as scripture? And how does that modify the way we think about the New Testament compared to other writings? And I kind of came at it from that point of view. And then as I started reading the book and found that it was actually a New Testament survey, I thought, okay. And it does kind of still do that. It still has that focus of helping you read the New Testament as scripture, but it's not quite what I expected it would. So each chapter, and I'll talk about the structure of chapters in a moment, but at the end of each chapter, there is a summary which talks about reading this particular book of the New Testament as Christian scripture. And so it talks about really the contribution that the, the word, that particular chapter or that particular book rather of the New Testament makes to the overall canon and to Christian history and thinking and so on and so forth. So that's kind of what I thought. But I thought the subject, I mean, why couldn't you call it, say, a New Testament introduction? Um, my suspicion would be that that would make it too technical because despite the term New Testament introduction, New Testament introductions tend to be very thick books which have a lot of content in them and tend to be very academic. On the other side, why not call it a New Testament survey and I don't know why that would have been a good name for it except that there's other books out there called New Testament survey. Maybe this is just a way of distinguishing this particular focus and, and sort of subject emphasis from some of those other works. So anyway, I just thought that the title was interesting and draw, certainly draws you in to want to read the book uh, even though it doesn't really tell you that it's a New Testament survey. It's well worth reading though anyway. And part of the reason that it's well worth reading is that frankly Christians don't typically read books like this at all. I mean I don't know about you, when was the last time you went and picked up a New Testament survey or a New Testament introduction? My guess is if you went to seminary that might have been the last time you did it. If you've never been to seminary good chance you don't actually own anything like this at all. These are very interesting books and they're well worth having at least one or two on your shelves and re actually reading them, not only as you, just for the fun of reading books, but also to help you understand the New Testament more fully. And so there are a number of these that I really like that I, maybe I will do a bit more on this, but I'm going to wait to hear from you on that. Leave a comment in the comment section below. So these are the sorts of books that you're more likely to read really at a college or a seminary level, and that's really where I think this book fits in. This is really, I think, designed for a first reader, the first, if you've never read a survey of the New Testament before, I think this is trying to fit that bill of being a first time, if you're going to read a survey and you want an introductory one, this would be a great choice. So that's, I think, where this kind of fits. And if you think it's important to know a little bit of the background of the New Testament and how the books are structured as you read through the New Testament, then hit the like button 
and let's talk a bit more about how this book is structured. So the way this book is structured, really it has four chapters at the beginning of the book with a little bit of background. You've got a little bit on the life of Christ, you've got an introduction to the fourfold gospel book, that is the four books of, that we regard as gospels that were distributed often together. He talks about a little bit about the history of that. You've got some New Testament background, a little bit like that. So these are kind of introductory matters, and I'll come back to that in just a moment. And then you also have, as you get into that first orientation piece, there's often a sidebar there that will tell you about uh, like the author, the date it was written, uh, a little bit about the background, and also things like source. Now, this is where things are and I'm going to come back to some of these things later on, but here's something to bear in mind is that this book has got a lot of these sidebars. And these are, like if you're looking at the Kindle edition or if you're looking at a physical copy, and I don't have a physical copy, unfortunately, I'd love a copy. But if you have a physical copy, those will be little sidebars in the on the page, colored sidebars on the page that will give you little bits and pieces of information. Now, there are a bunch of different types of sidebars. And what I like about these is that they don't detract too much from the main content. You can carry on reading through the main content and get the overview of the chapter. But these sidebars provide you with lots of really important little pieces of information. And so when you get into these sidebars, there are normally about five of them. Uh, there are things like theological issues, canonical connections, so connections to other pas passages in the Bible, uh, literary notes, historical matters, and reception history. So each of these have different kinds of information. Them. So for instance, canonical connections is going to connect you uh, with something in, say, let's say Matthew with perhaps, you know, Revelation or something like that. And so it's going to make connections like that so you can see how maybe one author's drawn on another one or something along those lines. And some of these are really, really helpful. For instance, later on in the book, I think it's around the area of 1 John, you get into this question of propitiation versus expiation. So they have a little sidebar there to help explain that. So some of these things are really, really helpful. These sidebars are really good. So you've got the orientation and your first sidebar is really the structure, a little bit more of the history of the book, like who wrote it and when. You also have a sidebar on the structure of the book as well. And so in the introduction, you have a sidebar that tells you the background of the book, like when it was written by who and so on. And then you also will have another sidebar there fairly early on that gives you the overall structure of the book, the literary structure. Now, you only normally get one structure uh, and there's, sometimes there's a sidebar that talks about the different structures, but for the most part, you just get the one structure, which is a little different. Some introductions will give you, you know, there's six different ways people have broken this out, and here's the three, or whatever it is. So there's different ways of breaking down New Testament books, just like any other book, and uh, a little bit subjective. So you get one of those in there anyway. And then what follows from that is you get an overview of the book, book by book. You get this breakdown. Using that literary structure, we go through, say, you know, chapters 1, to three, for instance, of a book, and it will tell you about what those chapters talk about and how that's significant. So again, it's just taking that, and that becomes the main body of content for each chapter of the New Testament. And then at the end of that, you've got a little summary, which takes you through reading this particular book as scripture with some key verses within this book, which I found some of the times it was kind of hit and some of the times it was miss. Uh, some of the books, it gives you exactly the verses that I thought would be key verses. Other times it kind of doesn't. Uh, so maybe that's a bit subjective, but anyway. And then you've got after that, you've just got some questions. And these questions are really helpful to help you think through some of the matters that they've talked about inside the text. So if you're using this in a classroom environment, those questions will be really, really helpful. So that's how the books are structured. You get a, the first four chapters with this background information, then book by book through the New Testament, following that orientation, kind of breakdown on the sections by section, and then finally uh, reading it as scripture. So who is this for? Let me just ask that. Most of these chapters, like I mentioned, are fairly short, but you know, some of the longer books of the New Testament, they are a little longer. Luke and Acts, for instance, are quite long, uh, and those are kind of the longer chapters. The way this is written, it's very accessible. A lot of New Testament surveys and introductions are not so accessible. Uh, they are very academic in the way they're written, and they often use quite technical language and lots and lots of footnotes. You don't find that in this, and that's both a good thing and I think it's a bad thing. It's a good thing in the sense that this makes this, really, if you've never read a New Testament survey before, this is probably a really good starting point. If you have read New Testament surveys before, then this is not quite so good. Now, that doesn't mean to say that this is perfect for everybody. There's still enough of an academic level here that I would probably hesitate using it just in a church environment, unless you're training church leaders. But if you're just taking it, if you're using it in an academic environment, I think this is anywhere in the academic starting points. If this is your first New Testament class, 
uh, this would be a great book to use as a, as a textbook for that class. So in terms of what's helpful in this book, I think really this got, you've got really good explanations of each book. Uh, you've got good explanations of the cultural background, uh, particularly if you just th sprinkled through here. I think one of the things that is really good here is the Jewish background, particularly with the Second Temple period, explaining that whole thing. I think it, this book does a stellar job, really, of explaining that element of the background of the New Testament. And that's really helpful. One of the things I love about this book is that it takes really the, the heritage of Christianity and drops it into these books. So you can actually see things like artwork and sculptures and things like this and how they flow out of certain books of the New Testament. So this is actually really good to connect you not you know just with the New Testament but with how the New Testament has affected history and how it's shaped culture over the New Testament history period as well. The other thing I really appreciated about this book is it's not overly polemical. It strikes, it strikes a really ironic kind of or, or peaceable tone, uh, which is really good. But there are a couple of things that I would have liked to have seen in this book. Now, and this goes back to what I mentioned earlier about some of these introductory questions. One of the introductory questions, there's, there's actually three areas. I think that the introduction to this, those four chapters right at the beginning, would have benefited from a little more information. And one of those is the role of biblical theology in putting together and understanding the New Testament. How have the authors thought through the biblical theology, the flow of scripture, the revelatory historical redemptive flow of history, and and, and thought through that. What's the method they've used is they've brought this material together. Uh, how have they done that? That would have been really helpful to have like a statement on, you know, how do you put the New Testament into the Old, for instance, those kinds of things as well. Uh, there's also use of wording like apocalyptic literature. I think a discussion of genre at the beginning of this book may have been really helpful. Uh, they talk about bios or well, biography through the, the uh, Gospels, for instance. But it would have been helpful to talk about some of those literary genres right up front so that you can then map back to those. Particularly given, as far as I could tell, there's not a definition of apocalyptic literature, for instance, through here, nor is there a description of who decides what is and is not apocalyptic literature. Uh, so some some of those things, particularly when apocalyptic literature and prophecy, you know, there's questions, should these be two different things? Are they the same? And I know there's arguments on both sides of this, uh, but that's something I think would have been good to have covered in one of those early chapters as well. And then finally, the other thing I really would have liked to have seen in this is that the authors obviously are well versed in historical criticism and the historical critical method, which has its place, but it probably... And I think, you know, when you look at the historical critical element of this book, they come to the right conclusions. They date the books generally conservatively, which is very good. But sometimes the way they come to those conclusions is a little, shall we say, murky. And it's not to say that they're trying to be unclear. It's just that if you're giving this to a new person who's never done historical critical or never been exposed to historical criticism before, then how do you come to the conclusions that some of these things are actually valid? And I think... You know, historical criticism, I think, gets a lot of airplay in the academic world. And I think for, for an introductory survey, some of that needs to be explained to the, the new person as they enter into that. And personally, I think the whole historical critical method is philosophically a little flawed. That's not to say it has no place, but I think we need to be really careful about the place that we do give it and be very careful about defining terms and explaining to people what role we actually do see it having. And so that's something I would have liked to have seen in the beginning of this as well. But don't let those things take away from the fact that for a beginning or first time through a, a New Testament survey, this is a really good, solid starting point. And so if you're looking for a bit of an introduction to the New Testament, something to maybe help bring it alive a little bit, connect you with church history and connect you with the way people have typically looked at the New Testament, then getting a book like this is going to be really helpful because as you read through the Bible, you can actually take a book like this, read through that section in the book, and then go through and read through that section in the Bible. That way you're getting a good overview of the scriptures as you're actually doing the reading. You're getting a kind of a two-way reinforcement, which I think is much better than just reading the scripture without any of that background. So I would encourage you, perhaps in the new year, January 2021, if you're going to do the New Testament in a year or maybe six months, then a book like this to go with that will be really helpful to give you a little bit more depth as you go through and read it. So 
What do you think of this book? Have you read a book like this? Leave a comment in the comment section below. Is this a helpful kind of video and review for me to add? Do you reckon I should do some more of these? Let me know in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you there. Thanks very much for watching this video. Don't forget to download your roadmap to mastery at masterntgreek.com slash roadmap. You can see the link in the description below. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Until then, keep taking small, consistent steps toward mastery. We'll see you then.